morning, everyone. I have this introduction slide here, but I think everybody here knows me. Um, so I'll just say for those watching, you can follow me on Twitter at jstoles2 or on LinkedIn at jstoles92. Um, I post all the content we make as well as articles there. And so be good if you give me a follow. All right, today we're gonna to be going over this preprint uh, from last July out of uh, the U, I believe, lab. And, and I, it's about antipsychotic induced epigenomic reorganization and frontal cortex samples from individuals with schizophrenia, which is a mouthful, um, but I think it's a good experimental design overall, and I liked it, so I thought we would go through it. The introduction here, um, so schizophrenia as a whole, it was estimated to have a 50% uh, inheritance between identical twins. Um, and, and recent papers have shown that it's actually 33% in monozygotic twins and 7% in dizygotic. Um, and, and this is this is kind of profound because most of the work that's made progress in schizophrenia has been to find genetic markers that explain the variation in this data. And this implies that there are large environmental variables and complex molecular biology impacting the development of this disease as well. And so we have to remember, and kind of the fundamental of this paper, is that gene expression is regulated by chromatin. And the status of this chromatin uh, depends on epigenetic factors such as histone, complexes, nucleosome positioning, methylation. Um, and there's a lot more, but really what we're looking at today is histone modification. Uh, this is important because while, while a lot of epigenetic factors get, I guess, what we would call set or stagnant, Histone modifications are fairly dynamic across a person's lifespan and as well can respond to environment. Um, and this has been shown in human brain previously. And so the question is, how much is this impacting the variation we see between even identical twins? And so a concept I wanted to go over here um, is we have accessible and inaccessible chromatin. So this blue stripe here would be your DNA piece um, wrapped around different nucleosomes. And each one of these little green pieces is called a histone. Coming off each of these is a histone tail. And those can be attached with either methyl or acetylation groups. Um, there's more, but for today, those are the only two we study, so that's the only two I'll get into. In this case, this open reading frame right here in orange can't be accessed. So this will be heavily downregulated because of the organization of the chromatin around it. And in this case, this is considered an open chromatin space. And this will be an upregulated gene. The machinery to make RNA copies can access the DNA here. Um, I think a lot of people miss kind of the role of histone tails. So if you can imagine these two as like a scroll, these histone tails work almost like magnets that either repel or attract. So in the case of methylation, um, they tend, tend to cluster each other. And in the case of acetylation, they tend to repel and open up the group. 
And what we can get from that, and this is this is broad stroke, but acetylation is associated with the upregulation of a gene, and methylation is associated with the downregulation of a gene. And so we're going to look at their experimental design here. Um, it's pretty heavy. Uh, it took me a minute to figure out, but essentially it's almost two groups of two, right? So what they did is they, it's a single nucleus experiment. They took uh, this group of 30, 15 control and 15 case, and they paired them by similar brains. Um, similar in postmortem interval and age. Age, yes. And sex. Yeah, age and sex. Um, and in this case, the the group of people with schizophrenia is affected but untreated. And then we have a second analysis here of with the same structure except 15 14 that is um that is post psychiatric treatment so in this case they've already taken um an antipsychotic or something something similar to that that may have changed the regulation of the genes in their brain and so what this experiment is trying to tease out is to what extent, I guess to let me back up, it's not fully understood, a lot of these antipsychotics, how they are improving the outcomes for patients. And so by studying like this, we can potentially find pathways in the brain that are important to, um, to impacting uh, the symptoms of the patient. Um, in this case, they, they're studying only cortex and they're using nuclei droplets. Um, and then they're doing a chip seek to, to map these histone tails back to the genome. And so we're really studying these two kinds of modification. So this one is an acetylation. Oh. And this one is a methylation. And that's the important part. And then we can tie this to the RNA-seq expression later on. Um, I think these were, I mean, they were new and sorted. And so this is, the outcome of that. Um, what you see here in B is marker genes for neurons and glia. And it's, it's not perfect, but what they're trying to show you is it, it, they got pretty good clustering and pretty good sorting. Okay, over here in this region, now we're looking at, um, I guess, the differential peaks. So when you do this analysis, it's not like, it's not like RNA-seq where it counts. You get a big wig file, and that big wig file has peaks like this. I should have made this slide bigger. But... Um, so it is Bayesian counts. But like uh, with genes, you know where mm -hmm. a gene is, you know the coordinates. Mm -hmm. With chip seek, you have to find the regions, yeah. peaks. That's what they call them. I get, I get what you're and saying. And then once you find the peak, then you can quantify. Okay. I've seen that peak. Gotcha. Um, but the idea here is that we have increased acetylation and um, 
in neurons for 11,000 regions and in glia for 3,000. And increased methylation of 595 regions of neuron and 73 regions of glia. And this kind of corresponds to the differential expression as well. It's not a perfect one-to-one -one ever between chromatin and differential gene expression, but we would expect to see this pairing where neuron is more than glia in, in the chromatin, and then neuron is more than glia in the differential expression. Um, is there a way to zoom in on the slide? Because this came out way too small. I don't think so. No. All right. I'll just move on then. Um, so this is a this is a heat map, or not a heat map, but it's it's more of a dot plot of the expression level of these different genes that are considered marker genes across glia and neuron and schizophrenia and controls. And this is tough. I, I wish they had just used a heat map. I almost made it two panels, like a heat map and then um, I guess expression level. Um, but they have this normalized rank score function I'm forgetting offhand where that's from. Um, I'll come back to that. It'll come to me. But essentially, they have these enriched go ontology for um, neuron and glia. And what they've shown really is there's a, a myelin difference in, um, in glia and they talked about, they talked about the, um, ex, what is it called? The microtubules uh, forming differently in the neurons or at least being expressed differently um, as a potential driver of these. This, this slide is, is kind of the bigger output of their summaries. And so in A here, we have uh, different zinc finger transcription factors. And what they're trying to see as a whole if we go back here, a transcription factor is going to bind here. And that transcription factor likely binds to multiple genes in a regulatory system. And so by tracking the behavior of that transcription factor, you can correlate that to a co-expression network. And so that's what they looked at here is really the binding of these four transcription factors that they identified as being important. Um, here, they have what they call PPR. Um, they didn't really explain it, but it was some tool used to analyze the data and determine which transcription factors were most important and regulating the gene expression. Um, so I'm thinking maybe it's some variance explained type thing, where if the transcription factor is bound, it's also explaining variance in the RNA data. 
But essentially here, the darker it is, um, it's supposed to imply the more important it is. And I think if we come down here to I, what we're looking at, uh, this is affected and untreated. And you get a very high importance and <clears throat> a very high importance of the zinc fingers, but a much lower um, importance in control. Or no, sorry, it's not control, it's uh, after treatment. And so what that implies is there's a difference in regulation between after treatment and before. Um, and that this, these transcription factors may well be identifying networks that are regulated by the drug, um, in this case, a neuron. Um, the same here for these two genes, SOX11 and NRH1H3. Um, Again, I, I didn't really understand the, the positive and negative here with P, PR, but the idea here is that it was very significant and previously affected versus after treatment. And so again, implying that there's epigenomic reorganization around these genes in order to uh, kind of suss out the etiology underlying um, which networks here are actually responding to treatment. And so these, these are just gene ontology enrichments and, and some plots that show um, which pathways are involved in those transcription factors. And lastly, one thing they showed here with these genes and, and this panel, the big takeaway was that age is a big factor in how much your epigenome actually reorganizes. Um, meaning if, if we look at here the correlation, um, of these genes with age. You can explain some of that, I guess, by saying maybe that gene is expressed less in the older population, but um, it appeared as if in their analysis and when they talked about this, that the older you are when you start treatment, the less your epigenome will restructure. Um, and they did have a smaller sample size of 14 and 15. Um, but uh, that, that's a pretty big finding in terms of, of patient outcome. So I think, uh, I think that's it for discussing the paper. Uh, thanks for watching.